Tiffin, the creators of the original Steadicam, launched a Kickstarter campaign to fund their Steadicam Bolt, a drastically different stabilizer for your smartphone or GoPro. And it seems like a lot of people are interested because it got 1,100% funded. But is it any good? We're about to find out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and you can check out some of my other videos here after you're done watching this video. And stay tuned because I'm also going to help you out with the setup process. The Steadicam Bolt currently retails for $199, and if you're interested in picking this product up, I'll have a link in the description below. The packaging on the Steadicam Bolt is very nice. First you slide off the outer sleeve, and then you lift the lid. You'll first see the instruction manual in a soft shell carrying case. You'll then find 7 magnetic counterweights, and they are used to calibrate the Steadicam Bolt. You'll then find the two rechargeable batteries, and you'll find the charging cradle and a micro USB cable. You can use any wall ward or USB slot on your computer to charge them. The lights on the crater will flash red while charging and then flash blue when their batteries are fully charged. The Volt comes pre-installed with a cradle that will hold most smartphones, but you also get an adapter to attach a GoPro. Overall, the packaging is great, and if you don't spring for the hard shell carrying case, you can always just use the box. Okay, so we're going to set up the Steadicam Bolt. So you're going to get this, and you're going to unfold it. You can just open that up, okay? You're going to notice that the body has this brace. I'm going to tell you right now from experience, get rid of it. It's useless and all it does is it gets in the way and it even ruins your shot sometimes. So, you can just slide that off and get rid of that. Goodbye. Okay. All right. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open this up. All right. So, you should have something like this. Now, make sure that the switch is powered off. All right. Now, we're going to go to the bottom and we're going to slide that open and throw in your batteries. <laughs> Make sure it's turned off or else this thing is going to start spinning like crazy. All right, now we're going to grab your phone. Now, for reference, this is an iPhone 6S, completely naked. No screen protector, no wraps, nothing. I like to I like to live on the wild side. You're going to go ahead and throw that in. Now, you want to get it as centered as possible. There's going to be a little indicator here telling you what the center is. Just center it as best as you can. And last, before we go into the next step, you're going to notice there's a knob down here. Make sure it's all the way down at 1. All right. So, if you have ever used a three beam, uh, three beam scale, you should have some experience with what we're about to do. Now, this is normal. This is fine. Okay, this is, we're going to calibrate this. You are going to grab the steady cam volt, hold it like this, and you're going to let go. Oh, no, that's completely normal. If this happens, you're going to go and look for your counterweights. One of these counterweights is going to have some threading on it. You're going to go ahead and screw that in. Okay, now that the counterbalance is screwed in, you're going to do the same thing. Hold it like this, and it's still going to go up. If that happens, that's still perfectly fine. You're going to go and grab some counterbalances. Here I have four. No, actually three for a total of four counterbalances. I'm just going to slap that on and do the same thing. The goal is, is to keep this flat. Okay, so it's going down. All right. If we take one counterbalance off and we do the same thing, you're going to notice it's going to go up. So that means we're going to get this counterbalance, put it back on, and now we're going to adjust the knob. So we're just going to slide that up. We're going to go from one to three. And here we go. Here we go again. And perfect. This is exactly what you want. You want the, the this to stay balanced. If it turns from side to side, that's normal. And we can just tune that up. A little bit more. Bring it up. Okay, just keep playing around with the knob until you've got something like this. If that happens, you're halfway there. Next up, you're going to hold it like this. Now, this, if this happens, you're going to go to this knob here. If it goes back, you want to bring your phone forward a little bit. Now, the more balance you get this device, the longer the battery life. This is as good as you're going to get it. Now, if you've balanced your phone correctly, then you're, then this is going to stay pretty steady. But if your phone isn't perfectly centered, let's say like this, this is going to start happening. It's going to go start going off to the side. If that happens, just play around with your phone and until you can get it perfectly balanced. I've been messing around with this thing for a little bit now, so I'm actually pretty good at setting this up on the first try. Here we go. This is as good as I'm gonna get it. 
Now, once you power on the device, don't worry, this is normal, okay? Just grab onto it and you are set to go, okay? Boom. The Steadicam Volt is made mostly out of plastic and weighs just one pound, but after shooting with it for over an hour, you get a killer shoulder workout. Like I said earlier, the Steadicam Volt is only compatible with smartphones and some GoPros. Unfortunately, you can't attach a point and shoot camera, which is a letdown for the price point. There are only two buttons on the device itself, there's an on off button and a button to switch between sport mode and movie mode. One of those in a second. On a full charge, the Steadicam Volt will last you 8 hours. In order to charge the device, you have to take out the batteries and place them into the charging cradle. I just find it odd that you can't charge the Volt directly through a built-in micro USB port. But unlike other stabilizers, the Steadicam Volt doesn't require you to use an app to operate it. But you can download Image Maker and it's a third-party camera app that basically gives you more control settings over your camera. Shots taken with the Steadicam Volt are noticeably smoother, but keep in mind my iPhone 6S Plus does help smooth out the video since this has optical image stabilization. But you will notice the shots taken with the Volt stay on the horizon better and there's much less wobbling. But even with the Volt, you will notice some undulating in the video. There are no controls on the Volt itself. If you just hold on to the handle, your phone or GoPro will stay true to the direction it's facing. But if you want to move the camera, you just have to hold on to the main body of the Volt and move your hand or you can just manually adjust it. Steadicam suggests you use two hands, but you can get away with just using one hand. But using the Steadicam Volt requires a very gentle touch. The main selling point Steadicam points out about the Volt over more popular 3-axis gimbals like the Smooth Q is that the Volt allows for fluid and much faster panning movements on the camera. Since you can manually adjust the camera, you'll be able to keep up with the action better than with the slower joystick control Smooth Q. But to be honest, I did find myself missing a joystick for certain shots here and there. The Steadicam Volt makes it very easy to adjust the pitch of your camera. You literally just set and go. Like I said earlier, there are two modes to the Volt. There's your default sport mode where basically there's more friction on the system. And then there's movie mode where essentially there's less friction on the system. If you tap the system, it's going to send the camera gliding. Whereas if I were to do the same thing in sport mode, you're going to notice the camera comes to a stop much sooner. In the hands of somebody with more experience, movie mode can be used to capture some awesome shots. But for me, I just keep it in sport mode. Even though the Steadicam Volt does a great job of keeping your camera steady, you have to be mindful of your movements. If you move too much, either the gimbal system will snag, your hand will hit the counterbalance, or your hand will hit the main body of the unit and is going to ruin your shot. If you move the system too fast, the pitch is going to start to change. But the biggest issue I noticed with the Steadicam Volt is that this system does not do well in a windy environment. Basically, your phone becomes a sail, and if it gets hit by a gust of wind, the camera will start to move, making it useless for video recording. For the most part, people who look into getting a stabilizer for their phone or GoPro are usually going to be daily vlogging. So they're going to want to get shots of themselves and then quickly switch to subject matter in front of them. The Steadicam Volt makes it very hard to film yourself with the back facing camera due to the counterbalance on the front. You have to get creative with how you hold the device, unless you're fine with using the front facing camera on your phone. The Steadicam Volt is better suited for capturing shots of subject matter in front of you than of yourself. And paying $200 to get stabilized shots with your phone is a bit steep and if you're looking into getting this because you're trying to produce higher quality videos it's safe to assume you're either using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera I mean don't get me wrong phones these days have great video quality it's how I got started with this channel but using a dedicated camera really has its perks I feel the Steadicam Volt is too expensive for the average Joe and I feel it's lacking in features and capabilities for someone with a bit more experience to be honest, I'm not a fan of the Steadicam Volt. For starters, the 8 hour battery life is too short compared to other gimbals out there offering 12 hours of battery life at a cheaper price. And in my testing, I haven't been able to get anywhere near an 8 hour battery life. The lack of physical controls means one handed operation requires a lot of dexterity or you have to use two hands instead. And there's no built in shutter button which means you have to press the phone screen and readjust the Volt again every single time you start recording. And if you're not mindful of your movements you then risk messing up your shots. For $200, I feel the Steadicam Volt should have built-in physical buttons and give you the option to operate with a joystick for minor movements or single-handed operation and let you manually move it for fast and fluid shots.
and I feel it should be compatible with certain point and shoots and mirrorless cameras. And I would have also liked if it had much larger batteries for a longer battery life, and not to mention better quality materials. But I feel the steady cam volt as is should have been priced at around $100 and marketed as a simpler and cheaper alternative to current more popular 3-axis gimbal systems on the market. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, it helps out more than you realize. For more product reviews and deal alerts, check out jimcaddy.net. If you want to support the channel, pick up a shirt, and I'll catch you next time.